begin our time of worship. We're going to start with King today. Let's go. 
king to you alone be all majesty your glories and wonders what tongue can recite you breathe in the air shine in the light oh worship the king oh, glorious above and gratefully sing his wonderful love our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and burdened with Last week, uh, I choose to worship. We're going to do that one more time today. And God's uh, working through this place. He's healing. He's guiding us. And uh, let's sing this to him. Turns to dawn, I'll lift my praises. I choose 
to worship. I choose you now. I choose to worship. I choose you now. I choose you now. Oh, Father God, we thank you that you are with us in the trials. We thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for everyone in this building. I pray, Lord, that your word be taught here today and that we would have hearts to receive it. And all God's people said, Amen. Welcome to Liberty. We're so happy that you've chosen to join us this morning. We hope this morning is a blessing to you. There are three ways to give here at Liberty. Online, lbcspokane.com. In person, the giving box on the back table, or mail it directly to our office. And if you're a visitor with us today, we're glad to have you. Please fill out a visitor's card and drop it in the giving box on the back table. If you are a new member here at Liberty or planning to join as a new member, we'd like to invite you to our new members class downstairs in the fellowship hall immediately following the service. Lunch will be provided for this class. The youth group has a couple of activities coming up. This will be winter jam this evening and also a youth barbecue coming March 31st. You'll want to grab all those details from our youth pastor, Joshua Kelp. Everyone is invited this Wednesday evening, March 29th, for fellowship and Bible study. Arrival time at 6 o'clock and Bible study will begin at 6.30 p.m. And coming up soon is Easter Sunday here at Liberty, the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Each year we have a lineup of activities, and this year that lineup will remain the same. 9.30 will be our morning breakfast, 10.30 will be our kids' egg hunt, and at 11 o'clock will be our main worship service. We encourage you to invite a friend out for that day. And to make the kids' egg hunt a little better each year, we're grateful for your donations. There is a donation box in the back on the table for all candy and eggs. In January, we announced the passing of Brother George Lewis, our longtime friend and member here at Liberty. The Lewis family would like to invite you to George's memorial service coming up April 22nd, right here at Liberty at one o'clock in the afternoon. Our mission spotlight this week is Tom and Regina Franklin, missionaries to the Dominican Republic. The Franklin's church has been under construction since last fall. They're excited to announce that their faith promise missions giving commitment has been the largest ever. Most recently, the Franklins have attended the funeral of a woman named Dona Jana. She was the mother of a national pastor there in the Dominican Republic. It was the largest funeral they have ever attended with over a thousand gathering. This pastor's family had been leaders in the community for many years, and this woman was the first person to leave voodooism in her family. This is why she was loved and cherished by so many because they had been freed from those dark practices because of her example. On a personal note, the Franklins are expecting their first grandson in April, and they ask prayer for that, and also for Pastor Dial as he prepares to fly to Cuba to visit other churches that the Franklins had started there years ago. The Franklins thank you for your continued prayers and financial support as they continue serving in the Dominican Republic. We're happy you chose to worship with us today here at Liberty. If we can be of any assistance to you, please call our office. We look forward to meeting with you again next week where service times are Sunday school at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. for morning worship. Well, good morning. As we get started, uh, we've got some prayer requests. Uh, I think we do. Yes, we do. Already on the bulletin. Is there any updates to those that um, anyone could share or, or needs to share? And if not, does anyone have any prayer requests? Jet, my man. Okay, and who is that, Jet? Andy. Andy? Anybody else? Cindy? Okay.
Anybody else? Great. Well, let's pray. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for this day. We um, ask you to fill us with your spirit today. We ask you to um, give us peace as we come with a heavy heart. We ask you to um, be aware of the prayer requests we, we have wrote here, um, the other ones that have been mentioned here today. Also, um, ask you to be with uh, folks that have a prayer request that have not been mentioned here. We ask you to hold us close to you. We ask you to keep us um, moving forward. We ask you to uh, be with the Zeke family. And we just ask for your peace and uh, guidance as we uh, move forward with the things we need to do as a church. ask you to bless this day. And ask for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you've not been here before and you've opened the bulletin, uh, I am not Pastor Jim Zeke, um, as many of you know, but I wanted to mention that. However, what I do also want to mention is my name is Tim Ray, and I'm one of the deacons here, and my name and number is on here. The reason I mention that is because um, Miss Dawn brought it to my attention the other day that Pastor Jim spends a lot of his time counseling someone or working with someone and sometimes doing things like that confidentially. And we don't want anyone to fall between the cracks here. So if you know of someone or someone that was in an issue or receiving counseling or something from Jim and needs help, I can't do that. But we can put you in touch with somebody that can. Uh, And so please make myself aware of that or any of the other deacons. Uh, The other thing that you may have noticed that uh, Josh Kelp, our our youth pastor, uh, was his idea. So if there's any, no, I'm kidding. Um, that the last Sunday of the month we have an all-family, all-church Sunday. So there's no children's stuff going on, no youth stuff going on. We just all meet in church together, and I I think that's a great idea. The um, other thing is Wednesday night. Uh, Don mentioned it in the video. We're going to kick off Wednesday night again. Uh, We're going to gather at about 6 o'clock downstairs um, for a little time of fellowship, and then we'll start some type of Bible study on about 6.30. Rick's going to bring his guitar and sing a couple songs, and uh, he's going to bring his guitar and play. Sean is going to sing a couple songs, and and, uh, I detected laughter there, but anyway. Anyway, it should be a good time. We hope to see you there. Cindy, who told me her father had uh, been a pastor all her life, says that people that show up on Sunday morning love church. People that show up on Sunday night, we don't have a Sunday night, just so you know, but people that show up on Sunday night love the pastor. People that show up on Wednesday night love the Lord. So that's that's Cindy that said that, so... If uh, just, just saying, you know. Um, let's see, what else? Um, what other announcements do I have here? Tim, so that means that Wednesday night is downstairs? Yes. So we can park, go ahead and park downstairs? Yeah, yeah, that door will be open downstairs. Um, I thought I had another announcement. Um, June 14th. Uh, did you have something, Charlotte? Go ahead. The second Wednesday in April is senior luncheon. Second Wednesday in April is senior luncheon. Okay. And, um, oh, I remember what it was. After service, members meeting. We're just going to have a quick informative meeting to let everybody know what's going on, uh, what we're trying to do in, in a way of moving forward, and, uh, and how that process is. Uh, is going and just so that uh, everyone's aware and and knows what's going on. Well, I uh, labeled this new opportunities. Um, 
we as a church have a great opportunity right now to overcome. When uh, Pastor Jim made this the uh, theme for our year of overcomers, um, he's quite a carpenter, but he hit that nail on the head. We, uh, and we're going to have to step up and do that. Um, the items uh, that I wanted to bring to your attention was that we need to stop looking inward and start looking outward. By looking outward, I mean look outward amongst ourselves. We need to be people that uh, are in contact with each other. We should be more in contact now than we have ever been. It, it's important that we do that, and I encourage everyone to uh, someone they haven't spoke to, someone they haven't talked to uh, in a while, that, that now's the time to reach out and do that. We've been uh, instructed by a good pastor in the Word of God, and uh, we've been taught to have a servant heart. Philippians 2, 5 through 7 says, Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. When we don't have a pastor, everyone here needs to be a pastor. And we need to approach it from that way and we need to care for each other in the same way. Um, we as a church are going to have to learn to struggle well together. Three very simple words that mean so much. It shows that in relationships, in our church family, in things like that, it's going to be a struggle. There's no doubt about it. We're going to do certain things that somebody may not necessarily be overwhelmed with. We're going to do things that maybe on the other side of the aisle, if you will, somebody will be overwhelmed with. So what we need to do, though, is we need to work those out, like in a good relationship. We need to talk those out. We need to talk those out to each other. There's a list of eight other deacons on that bulletin uh, that you can call, that you probably know, that you can call and contact and say, hey, what are we doing about this? What are we doing about that? And, and uh, you know, feel free to, um, to get out and, and talk about that. Things that don't get talked about are not good, especially uh, in the time we're going through. Uh, each of us outward, outwardly needs to be a good neighbor. In uh, Luke 10, 30 through 37, Jesus was asked, who is my neighbor? Boy, what is a good neighbor? He says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell amongst thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him for dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked upon him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was a neighbor unto him that fell amongst thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. And as I mentioned, as a church family, we should be closer than we have ever been right now. It's important. Number two, stop looking downward and start looking upward. And um, we need to be eternally minded. I've preached about that before. The, 
eternal mindset is uh, necessary for believers in general. It's especially nece- necessary for us right now. If, uh, and I've used the description before, if we take the beginning of time to the end of eternity and drew it out in a line, and as it would go forever, of course, but our life would be just a little bitty dot on that line, just a little speck maybe. We need to make sure we're living for the line and not the dot. In a Sunday school this morning, Jeremy brought up that uh, we don't know. We're not of this world, and we don't know how long we're going to be here and how long we're not. And uh, we just need to live eternally minded. Uh, Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I was looking through one of Pastor Jim's messages, and um, he had put uh, Genesis 50, 17 through 21. In that story, it, it you know, talks about uh, the end of Jacob's life as he had died, and his brothers still concerned, even though, even though Joseph has set him up, they're okay, is still concerned that uh, he may change his mind and do something mean to him, so, to them. So they, they come to him and they say, uh, they ask him, you know, uh, that, you know, your, your father would have wanted you to forgive us. And, and he just, upset over his father, he just can't believe it and says, I've already forgiven you, and points it out what God meant meant it, God meant it for good. What you wanted to do for evil, God meant it for good. And uh, Jim's notes had that in really bold type. And he didn't even describe the lesson. He just put it like I put it up there on the screen. Um, so God meant it for good. The last couple of weeks, I've had the opportunity to uh, speak with um, three missionaries. Two of them are uh, missionaries that we support. And... Um, one of them is a, a, a new acquaintance, a, a fellow from Uganda. And, um, but both of them say two things in particular. All three of them say two things in particular. It says, uh, please express our condolences to the church for their loss. And the second thing, every one of them said, no prompting, no nothing. And that is, God is going to re- reveal himself mightily to your church. And that's the only way something like this could happen. So we're to look forward to what God has uh, going forward for us. Um, Derek Thomas, our missionary to the Ukraine, um, who, by the way, is going to be here June 14th on a Wednesday night. Um, And we'll meet and hear all the things he has to say. Wanted to get him here for a Sunday, um, but uh, he's just too booked up. And, uh, and I believe right now he's got his wife and his family safely outside of the Ukraine, but he is still going back in and, and, and back and forth. And the, he said the same things I just mentioned the other missionaries said, but the other third thing he said is he sees so many bad things in the world that he was literally envious of Pastor Jim going home to be with the Lord. He said it's just so many terrible and and vile things that he sees over there. Um, Romans 8, 31 through 32 says, What shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him give us all things? Many of you know these verses. Um, Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And verse 7 is, uh, strikes me more than any of them. It says, And the peace of God, 
which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Number three, we need to stop looking backward and start looking forward. Liberty Baptist Church has been here for 43 years. The forefathers of this church, over time, have put directions in place to us for us to follow, and uh, we're going to follow them. I know uh, the last month there's been a, a great deal of looking inward and downward and backward, and this grief process never goes by easily, I know. And um, today is March 26, uh, which has been one month and a day since Pastor Jim passed away. For me, um, three years ago today, I was at home and minding my own business, and I get a phone call. And it's from my son's uh, HR department. And I said, uh, he had a long weekend, he is scheduled off, but he did not show up for work. And he didn't show up for work yesterday, which we thought they just made a mistake on the days he had off. But um, he uh, hasn't showed up today, and he missed a couple really important meetings, and it's completely out of character for him. And the lady goes, and I got to tell you, Mr. Ray, we sent the deputy sheriff by his house, and his car is there, and... Uh, but there's no sign of forced entry, so we just can't break into someone's house. Um, so I go, okay, so I'll go over there. So I'm thinking all the reasons he could have actually messed up his vacation request, taken off with a friend, done this, that, or the other, and all the things you want to think of. And, but of course, there's also in my mind, there could be something else. So I get over there, and I'm able to get into the house, and make a long story short, I found him in his bedroom. He had passed away at the age of 39. And uh, he had probably passed, gone to bed the night before and passed away then. His phone was full of texts and everything from his buddies, you know, wanting to know where he was and stuff. Um, that was a hard day. And as I waited there and, and, and dealt with the police and the fire department and all that, and that it got a little harder. The uh, uh, deputy came out and said, you know, he's under 40, so typically we have an autopsy. And I go, autopsy is a good idea. And they said, well, we're not going to do it. And I go, why? And they said, because he had a chronic heart problem. Uh, one that he never told his parents. And so from 2014, he had a pacemaker put in. And... and uh, Things just kind of went downhill, you know, from there. He had, he had struggles. Um, his death certificate read, uh, treated for a complete atrioventricular block, pacemaker-induced cardiomyopathy, chronic resynchronization therapy pacemaker with hyperlipidemia. When we say looking forward, I don't mean we forget about anybody or anyone, but we do need to move forward. And in that process of grieving, if you're moving forward, and I don't have to look around this room very far to know somebody has lost somebody, and somebody has lost somebody way before their time. But as we move forward, I found that we start filling our minds with, uh, with better things. We don't forget them. We do move forward, and we have uh, better thoughts in mind. For a quick example, regarding my son, um, Caleb, he was quite a character when he was little, and uh, one of the orneriest little boys I ever seen. Uh, made, it was our second son, and made me and Laura contemplate on what we were thinking. But at, at any rate, um, he, uh, we were living in Lebanon, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville, 
and um, they were having, we were going to First Baptist Church, and they were having a Wednesday night, um, see that's part of loving the Lord, Wednesday night thing, and, uh, and we were going there, and I told Laura, I go, I got to work a little bit late, but I'll just come home and, and meet you, and at church then, excuse me. And she said, okay. So I got home, changed clothes, get in the car, go in church, come up to the first traffic light. A guy runs into me from behind. He then runs into me again. He runs into me again. So, you know, what do you, you can't, do you want to get out of the car and kill him? Or what do you want to do? But you know you want to kill this person. So... I, uh, then about this time, I'm trying to figure out what to do. And that's when we had the phones in the car. Does anybody here remember those? They're mounted on your dash. So I'm, I'm pushing the buttons for 911, and the guy takes off around me, sideswipes my car, uh, the other guy's car in the next lane. So I'm following him down the road, and the dispatcher's yelling at me, you're not chasing him, are you? And you can hear the car. I go, yeah, I am. And she goes, we're not supposed to do that. And I'm like, well, don't argue with me right now. <laughs> anyway, um, it comes down to like a roundabout, and the guy spun out and lost it. And at the same time, the uh, police officers converged, converged upon him. And he was just a little fella, and he got out of this little Toyota pickup. And uh, out of the police car came the biggest bodybuilding police officer I had ever seen in my life. This guy was absolutely huge. Great big arms ripping at his shirt. And the guy gets out of the pickup truck, drunk out of his mind, and takes a swing at the cop. And the cop just kind of looked at him with disbelief, grabs him by the neck, back of the neck, and pounds him against his truck, and then opens the police car door and just tosses him in. And I'm watching this, and then the guy comes back to me and goes, you weren't chasing him, were you? And I go, yeah, I was. <laughs> And he goes, do you mind going over to the police station and filling out some paperwork? And I go, as long as you don't throw me in the back of the car like that, buddy, we're good. <laughs> so I, I go over, and, and uh, needless to say, it takes a little while, so I never make it to church. And uh, that evening, I, I get home, and I, I'm talking to my wife, and I tell her the whole story about getting run into and the cop and everything. And, and, uh, and I, she has this funny grin on her face. And I'm like, so what's with you? And she says, you should have seen Caleb tonight at church. And I'm like, and I know my son. I'm like, oh, Lord, what has he done? And she goes, no, 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 it's a good thing. And I go, what did he do? And she goes, he accepted Christ into his heart. And uh, went down front, and it was a big deal. And she goes, I go, well, that's not... That's great. It's not terribly funny, though. Wait, wait. She goes, no, you should have seen the way he was doing it. I go, what do you mean? She goes, he was literally jumping up and down. He was taking his hand. He goes, I want Jesus in my heart. So, um, try not to cry. So we have decided to spend our looking forward knowing that it's his heart that saved him as opposed to it's his heart that killed him. Um, I already mentioned Philippians 4, 6 through 8 was uh, some of Pastor Jim's favorite scripture. But when I think of him, I also go to Philippians 4, 9, which says, uh, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard, seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So you saw him do them, we need to do them as well. And the God of peace shall be with us. Um, one final story that some of you may remember that Jim has shared before. It uh, was one of his favorites, I think. And it says, uh, dying of cancer and using a wheelchair, Dorothy Bingaman didn't care what her doctor said. She wanted to be baptized. Her doctors had prohibited her from getting baptized. According to Mark Best, her pastor at First Baptist Church in Eulin, Illinois, but she insisted that she wanted to be baptized. Bingaman and her husband had both accepted Christ at their homes a couple of weeks earlier. 
Because of her condition, the church's baptismal pool couldn't be used. So a baptismal service was held at the, in February at the swimming pool at the Best Western Cheekwood Inn. A lifelong resident, Bigaman, had been afraid of water all her life. But just before we baptized her, Beth said, she smiled and said, I'm not afraid anymore. Bingaman was placed in a white lounge chair and lowered into the swimming pool. As 35 people, including many members um, of her family, along with many guests at the hotel, watched. After she came out of the water, Bingaman smiled and said, thank you, now I'm ready. Two days later, she went into a coma from which she would not recover. She was buried exactly one week after her baptismal service. The events literally sent the Ewan Baptist Church into a revival. Soon afterward, four people became Christians and one 50-year-old woman dedicated herself to mission work. Jim wrote here, don't let the setbacks of your past keep you from a productive future. Stop looking inward, start looking outward. Stop looking downward, start looking upward. Stop looking backwards and start looking forward. Corey Ten Boom says, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. So as we wrap this up today, if I could uh, ask you all to bow your heads and just take a deep breath and spend a minute um, communicating whatever it is you need to communicate to the Lord. Let him um, hear the things you have on your heart. Let him hear the, uh, your feelings and where we're at right now and where we need to, ne- need to go. And unlike my son or, or, or Pastor Jim, if anyone here has not given their life to Jesus, um, no time better than now if you just simply sitting in your chair by yourself say, Lord, I, I, I'm not 100% sure if, if something were to happen to me that uh, I would be in heaven. And I want to ask you to forgive me of my sins and wash that away. And I'd like to make a decision, Jesus, to follow you. If you've said that and meant that, Jesus will now come into your life. If you did, I would like for you to uh, let somebody know, let one of those deacons on that bulletin know, let uh, parents know, family, friends, someone. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, ask you for this day. We ask you for your guidance. We, um, We need you to keep us moving outward, looking upward, and moving forward in the direction you'd have us do. We pray that you'll uh, be with all our church family. We in particular pray for the guidance for our leadership as we move forward into things we have to do. We ask for all these things today in in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget the meeting right after service. Upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again. And I'm in that place once again. Once again I look upon the cross 
cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Now you are Exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at the saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. And I'm full of praise once again. Once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. And once again I look upon the cross where you died. Humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life uh, Father, once again we just thank you for today We thank you for the cross And I uh, just pray for anyone here who's, uh, You're stirred in their heart, they need you That they would... Uh, chat with somebody that can tell them more. Um, pray you continue to guide us in these trials, and I thank you for every person in this building right now. And God's people said amen. Have a great afternoon. Mm -hmm.